I think that for a lot of people, there's this hurdle in coming to appreciate what's going on in advanced math, since uh, all of the vague terminology and symbols almost act as this sort of curtain for the ideas to hide behind. Now, I'm still just a grad student and haven't been around long enough to appreciate my subject area in its full glory, but I think that it's important to make the ideas accessible to anyone who might be interested. So to give a rundown of what I look at, I'll try to break down the background topics into sheaves, moduli spaces, and then, as you may expect, moduli spaces of sheaves. Sheaves are pretty tricky to talk about, uh, but a good motivational example is what's known as the tangent bundle. You should think of it as the geometric object you obtain when you glue or bundle uh, together all of these tangent planes shown on the screen into one higher dimensional object. Uh, and as far as sheaves go, it plays pretty nicely since you can basically guess what it's going to look like over any point. If we abstract the idea a little bit, you still want to think of sheaves as these geometric objects you get by bundling together all of the red spaces shown on the screen. And this process really isn't any different from the tangent bundle since you just need spaces over nearby points to look similar. The main difference for sheaves is that these spaces can be pretty weird if you want them to. Turning our attention to what may seem at first like an identical notion, moduli spaces are a really powerful tool that tend to pop up in a lot of places you wouldn't expect them to. But the idea really isn't that complicated. If you give me a class or type of object like pseudotori, for example, suppose you wanted to make a shape where every point represented one of your objects. A sort of difficulty arises if your type of object has weird symmetries to it that don't just involve bending or stretching. In this case, the moduli space becomes fragmented into what are known as walls and chambers. By bending or stretching your original shape, you still remain in the same chamber, but if it crosses a wall, that usually means something peculiar happened. To bring things full circle, we finally want to consider what happens when we combine these two ideas of sheaves and moduli spaces together. Now, to keep things simple, I'm just going to focus on a small piece of my moduli space so we don't have to worry about crossing any walls. The idea is that as I move the point inside the chamber, I am deforming the red shape over possibly every point, or just maybe over certain regions, like what's going on on the screen. To give an idea where this comes in handy, think back to our first example of the tangent bundle. As a geometric object, when we fix a point on the tangent bundle, we are actually fixing an element on each individual tangent plane, which in this case is just a usual vector. If we think of the vectors as little hairs growing on our sphere, the tangent bundle then represents all of the possible ways a sphere can grow hair. Now one of my favorite theorems, the hairy ball theorem, says that no matter how you comb the hair on the ball, you will always obtain two bald spots, which mathematically speaking are just singularities. And if we think about this from the perspective of moduli spaces of sheaves, then this says that we would need to cross a wall into another chamber to find some sort of sheaf that doesn't give us singularities. Now in practice, people don't tend to look at sheaves over the sphere, but instead sheaves over either higher dimensional fano varieties or kalabi yau varieties, like what's shown on the screen. It's important to point out here that we're not actually deforming anything, but instead looking at different three-dimensional slices of the same shape. As you may expect, even trying to visualize all the possible ways this kind of shape can grow hair is an incredibly mind-boggling problem. But the upshot is that there are ways in which you can tackle this problem without ever having to visualize higher dimensions in the first place. But that's a bit beyond this video. I'd like to take a second to thank Grant slash 3Blue1Brown for making the source code used to create these animations available to the public through Manum, as well as the broader Manum community for helping answer any questions I had on this first project in the process.